when you start doing neural imaging analysis, at some point, you'll be using the same commands to analyze each subject, with only a slight alteration between each command. To save time, we will use something called a loop, also known as a for loop. Let's illustrate this with a simple example. Let's say that you need to print the numbers 1, 2, and 3. You could do this by typing echo 1 and hitting return, then echo 2 and echo 3. This gets the job done, but you can see that this would quickly become tedious if your goal was to print dozens or hundreds of numbers. How can we make this easier? You probably noticed that each time we ran the command, we changed the number after the echo command. Instead of doing this by hand each time, a for loop will run each command for you and automate it. Here's an example of a for loop to print the numbers 1, 2, and 3. You can also rewrite this as one line instead, with each part separated by semicolons. The semicolons divide the for loop into three sections. The first section is the declaration. It begins by assigning the first item after the word in to the variable i. In this case, it would assign the value 1 to i. The next section is the body, which runs the commands written after do, replacing the variable with whichever value is currently assigned to that variable. For the first loop, this will be the number 1. Since there are items remaining in the list, the loop goes back to the declaration and assigns the next number in the list to the variable i. In this case, now it's the number 2. Then the body is run again, and the process is repeated until the end of the list is reached. The last section, called the end, contains only the word done, which means exit the loop after all of the items in the list have been run through the body of the loop. You can add more commands to the body of the loop if they are separated with a semicolon. For example, we could change the loop to this, and the output would look like this. Eventually, we'll use for loops to analyze 26 subjects, with directories named sub01, sub02, sub03, all the way to sub26. For now, imagine that we simply want to print the name of each directory. Something like this would work, with the ellipses representing every subject name between 02 and 26, but it would be tedious to write out. You can make this more concise by using the seek command, or sequence, which prints every number in a range that you specify. For example, seek 1, 10, prints the numbers 1 through 10. We can include it in our for loop by using backticks, in which the command within the backticks is executed first and then expanded. This gets us closer to our goal, but it still isn't exactly what we want. Notice that the subject names we are trying to print should have two integers, such as 01, 02, 03, and so on, which ensures that each subject name is the same length. It also keeps them in order when they are listed with the ls command. This is called zero padding, and we can implement it in our for loop using the dash w option in seek, which looks like this. This equalizes the width of each number that is printed. If it's a number less than 10, for example, it is zero padded with one zero to the left of the number. This will be important later on when we use for loops to analyze all of our subjects. Today, we covered the basics of for loops. Later on, you'll learn how to use them in more sophisticated contexts, such as automating the analysis of an entire data set. But no matter how complicated the analysis, every for loop is built on the fundamentals that you learned today. Try these exercises to further develop your understanding.